43 women around the world gave birth to children, but the thing is, they weren't pregnant when the day started. This anomaly caused an eccentric billionaire named Reginald Hargraves to seek out the children and try to see how many of them he could buy. He was able to buy seven of them. And that's where the show picks up about present day when they all find out their father died. So we'll start out with introducing the kids. There's number one, his name's Luther. He's extremely big, he's extremely strong, and he's been living on the moon collecting samples, sending them back to Reginald. Number two is named Diego. He's basically a vigilante crime fighter who's really good with throwing knives. Number three is named Allison. She's currently a movie star, and her power is if she's speaking to you and she says the words, I heard a rumor, whatever follows will happen. So she says, I heard a rumor that you like me, all of a sudden you're infatuated with her. Number four is named Klaus. He's a drug addict who can speak to the dead. We don't know what the deal with number five is yet. He literally just disappeared a while ago, and no one's ever heard from him since the age of 12. Number six is named Ben. His power is basically tentacles shoot from him, and he's able to just beat people to death. But unfortunately for Ben, he's dead. And finally, number seven is named Vanya, and she has no powers. She's just ordinary. And all of these kids were used by Reginald Hargraves as like a crime-fighting group. Think of like the X-Men. And Reginald was very diligent in training these kids. He would track their brain waves. He would prepare them, but he wasn't a good father at all. There was no love in him whatsoever. And the kids really grew to disdain the guy. Pretty much all of them left except Luther who went to the moon, but he went to the moon on the behest of his father. But they're all forced now to come back because the dad is dead. Now Luther is convinced that the father didn't just die of natural causes, it was indeed a murder. Because when the dad was found, he didn't have a monocle on them and he always had a monocle on him. Diego used his ability of sneaking around at night, if you will, to sneak in the coroner's office and find the autopsy, which says dad just died of a heart attack even though Luther doesn't buy it. The body was found by the butler, if you will. He's a monkey named Pogo who talks, and he's grown up with the children. He is kind of a caregiver, if you will. But he was also probably the best friend to Reginald Hargraves. This is a guy who didn't really have a social life. There's also the mother who raised the kids, but the thing with the mother is she's legitimately a computer. She was created by Reginald Hargraves to take care of the kids, and she doesn't age. But she's also the only loving thing that they know. This is how cold Reginald was. He didn't even name the kids. He left that to the computer mother. Reginald had no interest in actually giving them names. He would literally just call them by their number. So they have a lot of resentment for Reginald, but they also have a lot of resentment for Vanya, who wrote a tell-all book telling the world all of their secrets. Because she was the only one who didn't have power, she was made to feel inadequate. You end up learning a little more about the characters in this episode, like Allison, who was married and had a kid, but has since been divorced. The father got custody of the child after it was revealed that Allison was using the I heard a rumor trick on the daughter. Klaus found out about the dad dying coming out of rehab, which he basically left rehab and went right to a dealer immediately. He's followed around by his dead brother Ben because he can talk to the dead. And then finally, there's number five, who was missing for the past 17 years. And Reginald was convinced that he was still out there, but the kids have long given up on it. But all of a sudden, he shows up out of a time vortex in the sky. While all the kids have grown up, he's still stuck looking like a 12-year-old boy, though. But he's seen some shit. It was perfect timing by him because he shows up right before the memorial service for their father. But he isn't really interested in the funeral or exchanging pleasantries. He seems like he has a mission to attend to. Apparently, he's been trying to get back this time period for quite some time and finally got the math right. He sneaks away and goes to a coffee shop at night. And while he's sitting there, he gets attacked by a couple mercenaries who were tracking him by a chip in his arm. He's able to take them out and he also takes the chip out. But he knew that they were coming, he kind of roped them into this, and he at one point even says, I'm surprised you guys didn't show up earlier. He heads to Vanya's apartment and explains that you're the only one I can trust because of the fact that you're ordinary. And he ends up revealing what happened to him. He says that when he jumped in the future, he saw nothing. Literally, the world was over. And he doesn't know exactly how it happened, but he does know a day. The world is going to end in eight days, and I need your help. Finally, the episode ends with Diego, who the whole time had his father's monocle and just chucks it in the ocean. 